everything's gone, not the end of the world. Now at the bottom here, we're going to move on to our second question here, which is just how do you get something that you've edited onto a DVD? So I have this video at the bottom here. It's, it's all edited, done, I like it. So I'm going to share it to a DVD. To do that, go up to the top right corner and hit the share button. When you do that, you're going to see a list of options. If you have not customized this in any way, it'll probably look very similar to what's here with the first option being DVD. If you don't see that DVD option, go down and click on Add Destination. When you do this, it opens up the Final Cut Pro preferences and you can add the DVD option just by dragging it from the right here over to the left column. Now, DVDs are great, but maybe you have a Blu-ray burner, so let's add the Blu-ray option over to the left side. Boom, and we got that. Now I've added it to our destinations on the left side, which means when you go up to the share menu, you'll see Blu-ray as an option. So when you're sharing to a DVD or a Blu-ray disc, there's really not too many options you have to worry about, but it can seem a little daunting when you first click on it. Let's click on DVD here and see what comes up. Notice we have an info tab and a settings tab. That's the first thing. And underneath info, you're going to want to go in here and name your project. You're going to want to add a description. Add the metadata here that you want to show up when you uh, burn this disk. So I might add my name in there because I'm the creator of this. But make sure you add that metadata anytime you share, not just for DVDs, but anywhere that you go. So that's under the info part of it, which is not too critical. The big things are going to be our settings. So after we selected share to DVD, we're going to click on settings. And this is the important part in where I find many people get a little hung out uh, on this. And it's where their output device is set. So by default, the output device is usually set to your hard drive. And what that means is this is going to create a disk image for a DVD. So it's not actually going to create a physical DVD. It's actually going to create a file that you can then later use to burn onto a DVD, which is great unless you just want to skip that step and go right to a DVD. And that's where you're going to want to connect your DVD drive to your computer if it doesn't have one built in, which a lot of the newer ones don't. Uh, if you do have one built in, you can click on this list and you'll see it and you can actually select it. If not, connect your external disk burner, and then you're going to be able to select the rest of the options here, which set up how you burn onto a disk. All right. So, so far, just to summarize, because it may seem like I talked a lot of, about a lot there, but all we've done is clicked on the share menu, selected DVD, and then changed the output device to your DVD burner. The rest of the steps here are for customizing the specific DVD you're actually burning. You'll notice here layers is set to automatic. I recommend keeping it that way unless you know you have either a single layer disk or a dual layer disk. You'll then see the build type. It's either going to build it as a file or a folder. If you don't know, keep it on file. Then you have your disk template, which these templates are your menus. When you connect uh, your or you put your DVD into an actual DVD player, most DVDs bring up a menu, and there's a few templates in here that you can use to customize the way that DVD looks. Then you can go down and name the disc and select some other stuff here. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of these templates that are built in, so what I usually do is change this show menu for when disc loads, and I just have it play my movie. Usually I'm burning a video. Maybe it's a wedding video that I recorded for someone. I'm going to give them that disc. I just want them to put it in, and it plays that movie, right? And then when it's done, it can go back to the menu at the end, but I usually like to change that. If you've added markers to your project, you can use your chapter markers here. You can loop the disk. You have a bunch of options here you can use to customize this disk. And you'll see a little preview down here at the bottom for how it gets customized. So that's how you create a DVD with Final Cut Pro. Very straightforward. Basically, you just go up to the Share menu, click on DVD or Blu-ray. Let's look at the Blu-ray options in this summary. You're going to want to name your disk here, put in the different uh, options here for your creator, any metadata you want to add. And then under the settings tab, make sure you change your output device from hard drive to an actual DVD burner so you can burn that over. And then you can set the rest of the options here. Most of these things, obviously, burning a DVD can take a long time and you don't want to waste disks. So if you want to test this out, keep the output device as your hard drive 
And when you hit next, you'll be able to choose where you save that file. And then when you save it, it's going to create that disk, save it to, in this case, your desktop, and then you can test it and see what it looks like. That's a great way to try out these options. The downfall to all this is creating a disk takes a long time. Notice here, it's going to share it. It's going to create and burn that file. This is a five-minute project, and it's going to write this and create it. It can take time. So that's the annoying part, especially if you have a slower computer. I'm going to cancel the sharing, but definitely test it out and try it there. All right, so that was our second question. Moving on to the third one, using sound effects to enhance transitions. And this is not a direct question I got. It was more feedback I had for someone who said...